Financial Grown-Up Guide, How to Pay Less for Healthcare, Like a Financial Grown-Up, with Clear Health Costs, Jeannie Pinder. You're listening to Financial Grown-Up with me, certified financial planner, Bobby Rebel, author of How to Be a Financial Grown-Up. And you know what? Being a grown-up is really hard, especially when it comes to money, but it's okay. We're going to get there together. We got this. No secret, our healthcare costs are ridiculous. What makes matters even worse is that it is one of the few things that we buy where we don't even know what it costs. In fact, we don't even ask ahead of time very often. We don't negotiate. We don't know what the competition is charging, and there is often zero transparency. The costs are all over the place. For example, a simple blood test could be $500 in one place, $7 nearby. An MRI, routine procedure, can cost $300 to $6,000 in another location just a few blocks away. Very few of us even think to compare costs and shop around the way we do almost obsessively, sometimes for everyday items. This is an urgent episode. I worked to bring it to you for a very long time. I am really excited about it. As you can tell, as a journalist, I can tell you, I really appreciate the work that goes in to getting the data that I just shared. But former New York Times reporter Jeannie Pinder is nailing it with the company that she founded, Clear Health Costs. Their work in bringing transparency to the healthcare marketplace by telling people simply what stuff costs is amazing. She has been called a benevolent genius for good reason. Listen to the end of the episode. It's not that long. Take notes or listen again or go to the show notes at bobbyrebell.com for a transcript. And by the way, all the episodes are there. Use the search bar in the top right corner to get more info about our guests or more info about the content of any of the episodes. But first, listen to this one. Here is Clear Health Costs founder and CEO, Jeannie Pinder. Jeannie Pinder, I'm so excited you're here with us. I've been trying to get you on the show for quite a while, <laughs> but you're a busy lady. You are the founder and CEO of Clear Health Costs, and you are here to basically give us the lowdown on how we can be better financial grownups when it comes to what we pay for our health care. Tell us first about Clear Health Costs and how it came about and what it does. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. Uh, we're a New York City journalism company, no longer startup bringing transparency to healthcare by telling people what stuff costs. We do this not only on our home site, but also in partnership with other news organizations in long-running consumer-friendly investigations. We're partnering now with CBS National News and WNYC Public Radio and Gothamist here in New York, telling people what stuff costs. How do we even know where to begin with controlling our healthcare costs? Because obviously, we often don't have that much choice when it comes to insurance, and we all feel like we're overpaying for insurance, and then we still have to pay for the stuff. Right. Yeah. So we recommend that people just, you know, whenever it's feasible, ask what stuff is going to cost you. We know that not everything is shoppable. Like, we wouldn't expect you to shop your emergency appendectomy or your cancer treatment. But if you think about it, somewhere around 80% of our healthcare system interactions are shoppable. Where are you going to get that sore throat looked at? Where are you going to get that MRI? Do you have choice in scheduling your surgery? So once you've ascertained that it is shoppable in some sense, you can start out by asking simple questions. Ask the insurance company, if applicable, and the hospital or doctor, how much will this cost me on my insurance? Okay, meaning what's the net cost to you? Yes, and what's the cash price? Quite often they'll say, well, we don't know or we can't tell you, but our view is that if we make that behavior a normal behavior, if everybody's asking, and increasingly we hear that people are able, doctors, hospitals, labs, clinics are able to come up with a number. And then how do you even know where to go to start comparing? Because sometimes to go to get a second opinion, I would think you maybe have to go get a second appointment with another doctor, which is not only money, but also time. Should you be going to second appointments just for the cost of it? How does that actually work in practice? Yeah, we usually suggest something simple like an MRI. You can call three separate providers and ask them those questions. How much will that cost me on my insurance? What's your cash price? Very important. Ask for the cash price. Can you explain that? Yeah. So we're hearing increasingly that 
people are finding if they put away their insurance card and pay cash, they can get a better rate. It doesn't necessarily fall against your deductible, although you should be able to take something like that from your HSA if you have one. But increasingly, we're hearing that people who are choosing to put away their insurance card and pay cash do better. Not in every case. What is the thinking behind that? Because my gut instinct, which is clearly wrong, is that it's better to have insurance, right? Well, you have to ask every time. All bets are off. There are no rules. Everything we thought we knew about healthcare, we don't really know that anymore. So, for example, we all grew up thinking that our insurance premiums gave us access to the lowest price. That is no longer true necessarily in every case. How do you even know? You know, in most cases, making three phone calls to ask the price, it might take you half an hour, it might take you an hour in advance of a procedure, but you'd be surprised what you find out. Yes, in fact, we've heard that a simple blood test could be $500 one place and $7 another place. And if you haven't met your deductible, it really makes a difference. A simple MRI could be $300 one place and $6,000 another a few blocks away in the same city. So explain why there's such a cost differential. Does one person pay higher rent? Is one place subsidized by the government, one isn't? I mean, why such a big differential? Well, the biggest reason why is that there is no transparency in healthcare. So people aren't used to publishing prices and people aren't used to asking for prices. A few rules of thumb, we generally think that any procedure in a hospital is going to be much more expensive. So let's say that lab test, if you get it at LabCorp on cash, could be dramatically cheaper than if you get it in a hospital lab. With that, can you negotiate? Let's say for some reason you want to have it at the hospital. Can you tell the hospital, well, if I go to a lab, it's going to be less? Can you match that price? Is that something that people do yet? Yes, people are doing that increasingly. I did it myself, actually. I needed an MRI for a member of my family. The orthopedist in question gave us a list of three radiology providers that he uses. And because I know how to do this, so I called the first one and said, I'm a cash customer. I'm not using my insurance. What's your price for the MRI, the particular code number? And she said $900. I called the second one and had the same conversation she said $600. And then the first one called me back and said, if you can be here at seven o'clock tonight, it'll be 450. Right. So it's like surge pricing on Uber, right? <laughs> Jeannie's reacting to seeing my face. I have a look of surprise <laughs> for our listeners that obviously can't see me. I was like, you got to be kidding. Oh my gosh. It's like, are they going to have Black Friday sales one day? I don't know. Hey, you never know. <laughs> So you can definitely negotiate. And is it the kind of thing where you can say, I'm willing to come in last minute and fill an empty slot because it's, you know, they're trying to manage their business? That's crazy. You can say anything that you feel comfortable with. I mean, not everybody is. Well, like, for example, my friend Cindy, she was going to a doctor. Um, she had to get slightly gross. She had to get earwax removed from her ear. So she went in and uh, the first thing they said at the billing office was, give us your credit card. And she said, how much is it going to cost? And they said, we don't know. And she said, well, then why should I give you my credit card? And she left. I love that. Well, not everybody wants to do that. And again, you know, we don't expect you to behave like that when you're on the gurney waiting to have your appendix removed. But increasingly, people are asking because people are getting these terrifying bills, making decisions not to go to the doctor because they got a terrifying bill. So what is some of the language that people can use when you want to negotiate beyond saying, well, your competitor offers this price? Can you make kind of a hardship argument, especially if you have insurance, but then the insurance isn't going to cover it that well? I mean, what are the kinds of techniques that are most successful in negotiating a healthcare bill, both before and after you get the bill? Right. Generally, we say just those simple questions. How much is this going to cost me on my insurance? What's the cash price? Yes, I'm shopping around. We don't hear a lot of people who are having a lot of success with saying, well, your competitor up the streets charging 6000 and I you know, would rather have it for 4000 But we do hear a lot of people who are asking that question very specifically and asking it of several providers, because quite often the providers do know what their competitors are charging, and they do want your business. We'll talk a little bit about that, because I think people don't always understand that there's the other side to this, that they also, in some cases, are not necessarily getting rich off of us. They have their own business issues going on. Right. And one of the issues that they do have going on is that there are people who are not paying their coinsurance and their deductibles. 
there was a huge conversation in healthcare finance these days about people who are just not paying. So as a reaction to that, we think these cash prices are coming to the fore. Not every time, not every place, but quite often. Let's talk about prescriptions. What can people do to lower their prescription costs? Because we were joking before we started taping that I have a prescription that would be very, very expensive, but my doctor gave me this kind of coupon that goes directly to the manufacturer and that made it only $25 and it's a monthly thing, which is great. But what if you didn't get that coupon? I mean, how do you even know what you don't know what to ask for? Yeah. So we say, ask that same question at the pharmacy. How much is this going to cost me on my insurance? And what's your cash price? You can also go online to goodrx.com and get an idea of what the uh, prices are going to be there. They have uh, coupons that they issue. In general, we hear a lot of people who are saying that they are finding that their copay, like they might have a $35 copay for a common medication, but they can buy it on cash for $4. It's crazy. That makes no sense, though. It makes no sense, right. Again, you think that your insurance policy gives you access to a lower price, That's no longer true. What tips do you have for getting the right amount of money back from your insurance provider? Because I find, how do you know if your doctor even coded it correctly? Are there certain ways you can research that yourself and make sure when they submit it, it's submitted in the best possible way for you? Because I find a lot of times they're not necessarily paying attention. I think you're, you're right about that. We generally suggest, and again, I'm not saying that this is right, because I feel like when people are not healthy, they're not at their best. They would rather not be arguing over nickels and dimes. But we do recommend that people ask on the front end, how much is this going to cost me? And then scrutinize the bill on the back end. Like, is this what they said they were going to do? And does everything look kosher here? We have a little handbook on how to argue bills on our website. I love that. We'll leave a link in the show notes. Make sure to send that to us. But in short, go ahead. How do you argue the bills? Yeah. So I have argued many a bill uh, over the years. (laughs) I'm not surprised. And probably very successfully. (laughs) Well, sometimes yes and sometimes no. But you should document everything. Do it in writing. Don't do it on the phone because doing it on the phone, you're not going to have any record of stuff. I have sent stacks and stacks of copies to CEOs of hospitals and of insurance companies complaining about my treatment. I can get a little bit enthusiastic about arguing bills, but it's worked out for me in many cases. And I think um, if everybody was reading their bills and challenging them, I think we would be able to reduce the amount of shenanigans that goes on in hospital and doctor billing. Do you think there's a lot of, you're calling it shenanigans, I would call it fraud, overbilling? you could call, I mean, in some places, I think it is fraud. In some places, it's shenanigans. In some places, it's just so complicated. You know, the doctor submits one code and the insurance company says, well, we don't code it that way. We code it another way. The sum total is that the patient gets stuck in the middle. What are things we can control? So for example, I noticed that one doctor, they have multiple labs they can send a test out to. Not all the labs may be on your insurance. Can you tell the doctor, please send it to this lab, not the other lab? Yes, and try to in every case. Again, it's really hard to place that burden on you as the patient. They should be doing it automatically, but you can remind them. And also when you're doing this prep work, I always recommend that people take notes, take names, and take numbers. You can ask for something in writing, for example, a hospital estimate in writing, which will then make it easier for you to argue on the back end should you want to. For many of us, we're a little bit squeamish about talking about body parts and money because it sort of feels like, ooh, well, maybe my doctor's going to think that I'm like a cheapskate or something. But I really think it's time for this to come out into the open and for all of us to get comfortable with the fact that asking that question is going to make us and our doctors, frankly, feel a lot better. Well, you are a tremendous resource. One more question. You know, we're talking in general about medical procedures that are not necessarily elective. Do you have any negotiability when it comes to things that are elective? You know, the elective procedures that we price on in our database are pretty much already negotiable. They're basically a cash marketplace. So we do pricing on Botox, LASIK, and teeth whitening, and they really are pretty much an open marketplace. Fascinating. So they're probably more negotiable because they're really running purely as a business where you can truly take your business somewhere else. Yeah, they'll have specials, you know, special on LASIK, special on teeth whitening. All good to know. Jeannie, where can people find out more about you and Clear Health Costs? Yeah, clearhealthcosts.com. You can also find us on cbsnews.com slash healthcosts wnyc.org slash health costs and gothamist.com slash health costs. 
tremendous resources. We're so grateful to you. Thank you so much. And happy holidays. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you. Happy holidays to you too. That was awesome. Big thanks to Jeannie Pinder. Be sure to check out Clear Health Costs, as Jeannie said, in all the places, including their partnership with WNYC Public Radio and Gothamist. That's wnyc.org forward slash health costs. You can also check out their partnership with CBS National News at cbsnews.com forward slash health costs. This is one of those episodes you definitely want to go to the show notes. You can do that at bobbyrebell.com forward slash podcast forward slash Jeannie Pinder. You can also just search for her name, J-E-A-N-N-E-P-I-N-D-E-R in the search box. That also goes for all the episodes of Financial Grown Up. You can get show notes and resources for all of them. And if you like this podcast, please be sure to subscribe and leave a review. And if you have other ways to save on healthcare, DM me so that I can share it with the whole community. On Instagram, I am at BobbyRebel1 and on Twitter at BobbyRebel. And of course, check out Money with Friends, my other podcast with my friend, Joe Salciha. You may know him from Stacking Benjamins. Be sure to follow Money with Friends also on all the socials. It's at Money Friends Pod. Thank you, everyone. Infinite thanks to Clear Health Costs, Jeannie Pinder, for helping us all get our healthcare costs under control, like the financial grownups we are. Bye, everyone. Financial Grown Up with Bobby Rebel is edited and produced by Steve Stewart and is a BRK Media production.